Welcome to the CV Confidence Coach Podcast with your host, Liz McGuire, where she helps you to learn the secret of an interview winning CV. Liz shows you how to deliver a compelling CV which increases career confidence, optimizes your professional visibility, and opens interview doors. Tune in weekly as she shares proven and simple strategies to help you craft your interview winning CV. Make sure you head over to www giraffecvs.co.uk to subscribe for our free newsletter with more CV writing and career tips. Hello again. Thank you for coming back and listening to the CV Confidence Coach podcast. Today I wanted to talk to you about control alt delete and how you can control alt delete your career. Now, those three little keys are a uh, invaluable at times aren't they you something some applications freezing you're getting impatient you're thinking come on I just really need to move forward now and uh, keep momentum in, in what I'm doing and in my work so you press the three little buttons and hey presto you can get rid of the offending area and move on to something new so how does this work in the context of your career when you control or delete your computer it's usually because something just isn't working and you need to shut down the offending tasks so that you can get back to business as usual as I've just explained but do you ever wish that you could control or delete your career you're not alone sometimes we hit a point where we feel frozen the human equivalent of not responding or a particular aspect of our job stops running smoothly and we want to deal with it and move on So if your career is suddenly at a standstill or you want to find a direction that's a better fit, then perhaps it's time to press Control alt delete and reboot your professional operating system. So, reboot or reset? If you've ever called a PC helpline or spoken to someone techie about your computer problems, the first question they'll ask is, have you rebooted your PC? Turning it off and turning it back on again, that's often the first point of call. And it's amazing how many idiosyncrasies and niggling problems can be sorted out just by switching off a computer and then turning it back on again. In many ways, us humans are the same. We get overloaded with information and data, processing everything until we feel overwhelmed. Sometimes we just need to switch off and reset too. And switching off enables our minds to be calm and new thoughts to come in and us to really evaluate what's important. Before you start any job search, it's really important to take a step back. Book some time off work if you can. Switch off from the stress of projects and deadlines just for a while. Away from the hustle and bustle of the office, you can earmark some time to think about your current job. How do you feel about it when you've had some downtime? Are there aspects of your job that you could change or improve without the necessity to leave it, leave the job? Is there someone at work that you can talk to about how you feel? Do you have a sinking feeling about going back to work or or does it still make you feel challenged and excited once you've had the opportunity to reboot? The next step is to identify the problem. If you're listening to this, the chances are that you feel the time has come to move on to pastures new. But before you start your job search, it's really important to identify what isn't working for you in your current role, as well as defining what's working well, because that will really help you to define the deal breakers when applying for any future position. So what do you like about your current job and what gets you down? What are you looking for in your next role? Do you want something similar? Do you want more responsibility? Or do you want to move into a different role or industry but still capitalise on your transferable skills? Assess what works for you and what really doesn't. It's a bit like running a scan on your computer to pinpoint the problems. You can then come up with a plan of action for your job search. So, how about defragging your CV? Your next step is to dig out your CV. When was the last time you refreshed it? Does it include your latest skills, experience and achievements? 
As well as updating the information included in your CV, it's also important to check it over for flabby bits that need trimming. Are there sections that would flow more smoothly if they were pulled together? Are you duplicating information on your CV? Perhaps you're wasting valuable space with unnecessary information such as references available on request, that's kind of a given, or too much detail about irrelevant hobbies. Now's the time to make sure all of your information is in the right place. Although you can create a generic CV as a starting point, it's, it's best practice to adapt it to complement the job for which you're applying. When you do this, reflect the language that's used in the job description and person specification and show how you fulfil the essential and desirable attributes of of the uh, company's ideal candidate. So how about an upgrade? Is there anything blocking you from the next step in your career? Perhaps not having a particular skill set or a lack of experience in a specific area is making you feel like there's a firewall preventing you from accessing your dream job. Just like with your PC, sometimes you need to get some new software or access some new resources that that are going to help you to make the best of things. And it's the same with your skills. If you need to update them, it can really open doors. It might be time for an upgrade. Is there training that you can take to improve your management skills? Maybe you could work with a mentor to help you tackle the challenges of a leadership role. Or do you just need to learn some new computer skills or or get some more hands-on experience? If you don't have the time or resources to upgrade, don't panic. There may well there there may well be a workaround. You can still be a successful applicant by demonstrating how you've been able to learn a similar computer program quickly, for example, or that perhaps you've got the transferable skills that will enable you to succeed in your new role. Use your CV to show that you've risen to challenges in the past and that you've grabbed every opportunity to learn and grow in your career and this will show your potential to upgrade in future. Maybe you need to call an expert. Sometimes pressing control alt delete is just the start And even after a reboot, a refresh or defrag, you just need to call in a professional. Having an expert review your CV may make all the difference to getting your career and job search unfrozen and back on track. A professional CV writer, for example, will be able to look at your career history objectively, highlight your achievements and reframe skills that you take for granted This will help them leap off the page to prospective employers. A professional eye can be a great time saver too. Instead of you spending hours trying to make your CV work, an expert CV writer knows what works and what doesn't and can give your CV that all-important refresh in half the time. If you think your CV would benefit from an expert eye, then please feel free to try our free CV review service. It might be helpful for starters. You can access it at www.giraffecvs.co.uk. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the CV Confidence Coach podcast. If you did, please do leave a review and subscribe here in iTunes to make sure you don't miss the next show. Head on over to www.giraffecvs.co.uk to subscribe for our free newsletter for more CV writing and career.